All right, guys, this isn't going to be a tutorial or anything. It's just kind of some general, general uh, work, general knowledge. Uh, this is some forks off of... And this is a real common type of fork that you'll find in the 70s and early 80s. And so I thought I'd do a little uh, quick uh, demo how to take these things apart. They're pretty easy. First thing you want to do is find your drain plug and get that out on this one I had to drill it out because it was it was rubbed flush we can squeeze out the oil into an approved bush one that you preferably want to kill not a whole lot in there next we're going to take off the end cap if you got one and so and you'll see that there's a allen bolt down in there it's usually an allen bolt it's hopefully an allen bolt because if it's not it's a pain in the butt okay so we're going to hold the aluminum part of the housing in the vise like so got our allen wrench in there Hopefully it'll work free, easy like that. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Take that. And then you might want to go drain some more oil out of it from that hole. On these, they'll just pull apart at that point. Just like that. Again, they don't always come that easy. I'm going to put that over to drain. There's a piece of uh, bushing down in the bottom usually. It'll fall out, so make sure you get that when you take it to go drain it. All right, now this piece uh, is held in by spring pressure. We're going to go back to the vise. And these have a little bit of an odd, odd cap to them. Uh, now you can use a smaller star bit. I think will go down in there. But I just happen to have this. I picked a bunch of these big Allen wrenches, if you want to call it that, hex nut wrenches. Picked up a bunch of these. Had no idea what I was going to use them for and it's a perfect fit it's nice when that comes together like that I take that nut out there'll be a little bit of spring pressure on them usually sometimes more than others just kind of hold on to it as you're coming out and just like that there's a nut spacer Turn this over and the rest of it will come out. Grab your spring so it don't fall over the place. I have some oil on it. Also your plunger will come out. Give those all the white down and set them aside. Get rid of these tubes. Okay, here's another situation you might run into. This one's a little bit more difficult. This is a uh, mid-80s Virago fork. And you'll notice that, again, the, the tubes are toast. There's no saving those. But the worst part is that these have been left open. So 
first of all don't know what we're going to find in there it might just be junk inside but the other thing is, is there's no way to get through here this is rusted completely shut so I'm going to have to actually cut this tube but before we do that let's go ahead and do the rest of the stuff again same deal get your drain plug out go squeeze it off into uh, your least favorite invasive species bush and then we're going to stick it in the vise a little protection now this also has a a hex screw in it but it's a little bit more difficult it's, it's smaller and it's deeper so you can buy the you can buy an extension for your ratchet or you can just take an old piece of allen key hex hex wrench that works cut it off to the length you need get it in there take you the same size socket on a wrench and make your own extension uh, I don't recommend you try to impact these <sighs> all right now we have a little problem here probably because it's rusted shut what it's actually doing is turning the whole tube below it. So let's try it with the tube stuck. Like I said, I told you this was more difficult. Get a wrench that somewhat fits this. All right, I don't know if you can hear that, but I'm not doing anything. What's happened now is I'm turning the whole mechanism inside. So we're gonna go ahead, go ahead and have to cut this. All right, I usually don't get into the whole uh, personal protection thing and wearing face masks and whatnot. On cutting one of these, I really recommend that you wear some sort of eye protection. The reason is is because cutting this isn't a big deal but once you get into the spring in here there's a possibility that the, that the blade will catch and break so wear your face shield and i'm even going to wear some gloves All right, so there's nothing down in there to hold so you can turn the screw. So what I did was just jammed a piece of bar down in there to hold the plunger so that I could unscrew it from the end there. And that has worked. It's not the optimal way to do it. <laughs> at all but when you're dealing with uh, stuff that's had water intrusion sometimes that's just the way it goes okay we get that screw out of there the bolt out of there all right so again just took a bar shoved it down in there as tight as I could get it and use that to hold it to get enough tension on it to get this bolt out of the end of it. Now, why did I have to do that? The spring wasn't putting enough tension on it. And that happens a lot of them. So, I'm gonna set that aside. And uh, I'll go get another one.
All right, last one. This uh, I believe was a CB450. It's got a couple differences, but basically it's the same. The cap off. We got the same sort of hex nut in there. This is our drain instead of a screw. We got a nut. All right, go squeeze that out. All right, this one might be interesting because that was all water. Break that free. Flip it over and on this side you see this time we've got a just a hex cap or a regular type of cap. It's a whole lot tighter than that. Twenty-three millimeters. And that was kind of pre-loosened, I think. Cap out. Pull the spring out. Oh yeah. I'd say that's wet. Water wet. Okay, now these are the kind I don't like. We have a snap ring that's holding in the uh, oil seal. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna try to get it moving. So then at least I know that it's loose. <laughs> Quit hitting the camera. see that moving there's actually a hole right here There we go. Right tool for the job. Alright, so I really don't like these kind. Because really the only way to pull it out it's just a beat on it. Like so. And I think you'd say there's just water in there. Okay, so once we get that out of there. Damper out. That's what gets screwed into. And I think that's it for the tube. That's it for the leg, I should say. Okay, got you zoomed in on the uh, fork tube here, and you'll see that there's a piece here, a piece there. 
All right, this is the other reason I don't like this one. This type. Again, pain in the butt. So we got a snap ring here. It's really tight. Damn it. See, I'm doing this the wrong way. I'm not a moron. Oh, I swear. Heck. Feel like one right now. Jesus. Get the hell out of you. All right, once you get that off. You can get that piece off. Then, then we have a series of small retaining rings, snap rings, whatever you want to call them, down through here. These aren't so bad, but the lower you go, the more uh, grooves you have to work through. So that's what they look like, just a small retaining ring. Then you can get this piece off. You got another retaining ring. This one's a flat ring. The other one was rounded. So it's a little more difficult to work up. See what I mean there? You got you go in one hole or one groove and then you move it up to the next groove. And then you try to skip it, but you still make don't skip it. Is that one? You got another one here. Seems like Honda does this the most. Having all these little stupid tanning rings. Of course, it also makes the fork more expensive because the fork tube more expensive because you got a lot more machining to do on it. Okay, this one is round as well, but it's a little thicker, so it's also a little harder to move. All right, let's try it another way. Just get it started. Okay, I almost got myself. have a burr on it or something because it just gets stuck in each one of the grooves. There it goes. Whoop. All right, that's number three or four. I don't know. And we'll bring our piece, this piece up. That'll come off. 
and then this piece could actually go either way. That's just a fork seal, that's trash. That's it. So uh, that's going to cover probably the vast majority of road going bikes, road bikes from uh, the late 70s and early 80s. They're all pretty much the same, but they each have their little intric intricacies. So uh, anyway guys, thanks for watching and I uh, hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and uh, subscription if you haven't. See you next time. Bye.